This video is on scientific notation. A number is in scientific notation if it is written as a product of a number between 1 and 10 and a power of 10. What this means is it must be written as a product, meaning something times something, of a number between 1 and 10. 4.86 is between 1 and 10. 9.7 is between 1 and 10. 486 is not between 1 and 10. 0 0.0097 is not between 1 and 10. So we are taking these numbers and we are rewriting them so that the first number is a number between 1 and 10. And then the second part is it's going to be a power of 10. We have to come up with rules for getting these two parts. We have to get this first number and then we have to decide on the power of 10. So the first thing you want to do is to scan the number from the left and place what I call an imaginary decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So I scan in from the left and I place an imaginary decimal point. So I actually just put like a little carrot thing right there. That's my imaginary decimal point because it's after the first non-zero digit. So scanning in from the left, I see my first number. Then I put my imaginary decimal point right behind that number. This automatically creates a number between 1 and 10. So my number between 1 and 10 is 4.569 times 10 to some power. That's our second part. Determine how many places the imaginary decimal needs to move to line up with the original decimal point. Well, you may look at this number and say, hey, where's the original decimal point? I don't see a decimal. If there is no decimal showing, it's understood to be at the end of the number there. So what we're trying to figure out is how many places does my little imaginary blue carrot here have to move to land on this red decimal point? Well, this would need to move one, two, three places to land here. So this makes times 10 to the third. So 4,569 4, is equal to 4.569 times 10 to the third in scientific notation. Let's look at another example. Follow these rules here. Scan the number from the left and place your imaginary decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So scanning in from the left, there's my first number. I put my imaginary decimal point right there. And then that creates my number between 1 and 10. So this is 4.5000. Zero, zero, zero. Now, one of the reasons to do scientific notation is to not have to write all these zeros. So 4.5000 zero, zero, zero is the same as 4.5. So I'm going to just drop those off and write 4.5 instead times 10 to some power. Well, my original decimal is sitting here. Here's my imaginary decimal. It needs to move one, two, three, four places to get back to where it was originally. So that is my number in scientific notation. 4.5 times 10 to the fourth. Here's a pretty big number right here. Same process, scan in from the left, and I get 6.53, etc. with all the zeros. But in this case, I'm just going to write the 6.53. There's no reason to write all those zeros. Times 10 to the whatever power will get my imaginary decimal to line up with my original decimal. That imaginary is going to have to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places to get lined up here with the original. Now, maybe you've noticed something about the last three examples. These last three examples, here's our examples, here's our answers. Every one of these has a positive exponent. And the reason we have a positive exponent on these examples is because we started with big numbers. So big numbers have positive exponents. That's just one little thing you can do to check to see if you've got the right exponent. Big numbers have positive exponents. We have to deal also with little numbers. 0 0.00987 is a very small number. We are still going to scan in from the left, but we're looking to put our imaginary decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So I go here, I don't want that, I don't want that. Here's my first non-zero digit. I put my imaginary decimal point right there, which creates 9.87 as my first number times 10 to some power. Now this time, my decimal point is already visible and it's up in the front. How many places does my little carrot need to move to line up with my original? It's going to have to come past the 9 and past those two zeros. So that's three places to the left 
which is a negative exponent. Think about your number line, plain old number line. These are your positive numbers going this way. These are your negative numbers going that way. So if you have moved to the left, that's going to be a negative because to the left on the number line is negative. Same process here. Keep scanning in. These are all zeros. i got to get past the zeros. Here is my first non-zero digit. I'm going to put my imaginary decimal point right after that. So this gives me 7.65 times 10 to some power. Go back to this problem. My imaginary has got to move from here all the way over here to the left. That's got to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places to the left. Notice little numbers like these two have negative exponents. One last one like this, 0.16, scanning in from the left. There's my first non-zero digit. I'm going to put my imaginary right there, and this is 1.6 times 10 to something. That imaginary has only got to move one place to the left to line up with where the original decimal was. So there is my scientific notation, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 1. So here's the last examples we did. These are all small numbers, and all of these small numbers end up with negative exponents. So that's putting numbers in scientific notation. You also have to be able to go the other direction. You have to write it in, in what's called standard notation. Sometimes directions will say write without exponents. That's going backwards. So we're taking the number out of scientific notation, and this is much easier. All you have to do is move the decimal point in the correct direction and the correct number of points. So if the exponent is positive, you take that decimal and you move it to the right. If the exponent is negative, you move the decimal to the left. So here is a number in scientific notation. We want to move this decimal. Since this is a positive number, we want to move it to the right. So let me rewrite this so I have room to do this. This is 2.89. That is a positive 5. That decimal needs to go 5 places to the right. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And in each of those little waves, I have to put zeros. So your number in standard notation is 289 with three zeros or 289,000. Notice a positive exponent gave us a big number. Take a look at this example. This is 3.98 times 10 to the negative 6. That negative exponent tells me to move that decimal six places to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And in each of those waves, I'm going to put zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, four, five, zeros. Now think about that. That negative six, when I had to move that decimal point, I had to move it one place to get past the three, which is what required me to add five zeros. So my answer written a little more neatly is point zero 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 three nine eight. So that's the simple stuff of scientific notation, either writing something in scientific notation or taking it out of scientific notation.